Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today uh, we are going to talk about blood. Blood, 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 blood and guts. And I was, as I was looking back, I was actually amazed I hadn't covered this topic yet. <laughs> uh, but I realized I hadn't and so, and at the same time somebody had asked me a question, so we're going to talk about blood. Uh, so blood effects are a really fun thing you can do with your miniature. Um, one of the big problems I see with blood right off the gate, so just right off the rip, I'm going to start with this. Um, don't use blood to try to cover up bad work. So sometimes I see people do basically less than the full paint job, and then they just kind of throw blood all over the thing, and then it still just looks like a bad paint job with blood all over it. So what I'll say is before you ever get to doing blood effects, you still have to paint the whole miniature, okay? So you need to get it to wherever you want it to be, whatever level you're, you're, you would normally paint to. I'm not telling you you need to paint a masterpiece. I'm just saying take the model wherever you would normally go, whatever your goal is, tabletop, display, whatever it happens to be, then go to your after effects. Just like weathering and just like any other post-painting effect, the model has to be finished because the blood and stuff like that is very transparent. It needs to be to look realistic. And as a result, if you, if you have an unfinished model underneath and then the blood is very flat and doesn't have the tonal variation we would otherwise expect, it's going to show through and it's going to ring hollow. It's just that easy. Okay. All right. So with that word of warning out of the way, let's talk about some of the stuff we're going to use today. Uh, because what we're going to do is we're going to talk about blood spatter. Uh, we're going to make some blood sprays and we're going to do some blood strands. So we're going to cover all of that. Uh, so we're going to use some good old Citadel blood for the blood god. This is a great technical paint. People will often use this and only this. Uh, you know, it looks like that. It's basically the same consistency as the gem paints. Uh, this is not, this isn't usually enough alone. Usually, there's a couple times. Um, I've also got some Vallejo game effects, fresh blood, some red ink. Um, I've got some fantasy games, Arbuckle's Brown, but any kind of deep red brown will work. Uh, and then finally, I've got some Uhu glue. Uh, and we'll see where this comes in a little while, but this is, uh, definitely a thing to own if you're looking to do some great blood effects. So let's start with the simplest sort of, um, the simplest sort of thing, which is just bloody weapons. Um, these are often, so this web, this is a big giant gross club. It's probably smashed a bunch of people. So the idea would be, we want to get some blood on here. Um, by the way, I don't use my wet palette for this. So I just have a little old regular palette off to the side here. Um, so when I want to do blood on a, on a weapon, I just want to show like, he squished somebody's skull. Okay, cool. The first question you need to ask yourself is, is this the first time he squished somebody's skull? I know that sounds like a weird question, but my point being is that blood will oxidize and change color in less than five minutes. And once it's changed color, it doesn't look like bright red anymore. It turns a deep sort of brownish red with like some purple hues in it. So if you are intending to show a weapon, that's old, like this thing is old and rusted and poorly cared for. If that's the case, he's just not cleaning it. And in that event, one would expect that he does not have just one layer of blood here. So if all I do is take some blood for the blood god and kind of slap it on, it just rings hollow because I have just one little fresh blood effect next to all these old effects. You can get away with it, but you'll get a much richer effect if you have some differentiation going on. So to do that, I'm going to take some of my Arbuckles Brown. Again, you don't have to use this one. Just use any deep uh, brown red. There's a bunch of them. Um, anything that looks like a dark brown red is going to be great. I'm going to take a little of my fresh blood. Get that nice and shaken up. Get them both onto my palette here. Okay, well, I would if my fresh blood would flow. Just a moment. 
There we go. I hadn't opened this one before I started recording. I apologize. There we go. And then I'm going to take a little of the red ink. Now, the other thing about blood is that only very fresh blood is actually glossy. So here's my three colors on my palette. Brown, fresh blood, red ink. Now I'm just going to take an old sort of crappy brush. And what I want to do is I want to get a little of this, get in some of that fresh blood. I'm just going to take a dab of that red ink because I want a little bit of heat in there. And what I get is something that looks like that. And then I'm going to wipe most of it off. And then on this club, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start stippling, start stabbing the actual miniature. Okay. I've wiped off a lot of the excess. I don't want a lot here. We go for a light application. You want to focus, obviously, on things like where he would connect. This is where the club would tend to hit, so this is where we want to focus, and this is why we wipe off most of the excess and go for multiple layers, because we want the blood to be diffuse over the whole area, and so the best way to achieve that is by lots of repeated stippling, and so I can build it up. So, in other words, what I'm saying here, to make it very real, this is how much paint I take onto my brush, but then I wipe off that much, okay? And then when I stipple, I'm just lightly stabbing, randomly. But, as I get to the areas that would be more heavily blood caked, because this right here is where he would impact against his enemy's brains the most, I stipple that more, but I just kind of fade down here. So what we get are little random patterns. And as each time I stipple, it dries and overlays, I get an organic natural pattern to the blood. Okay. So there we go. That's my first just kind of layer down. You can see we've got a nice deep red. Um, and that's going to be basically the color of our dried blood. Now, if I want to push a little more, I can grab some of that Arbuckles, mix it in just a little bit, grab some of my deep brown red. And in some of these deepest areas here, where it might be kind of in shadow, I can push a little more in here and there. There you go. Okay. Now, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some more of my fresh blood. Again, I'm using the Vallejo fresh blood. You can use anything you want. It doesn't really matter. Any kind of red will basically work that's in the right crimson tone. You want something that looks a little crimson. So now I'm going to take it, you can see I've got something a little more red. There we go. Okay, now what I want to do is stipple on a new layer of this is the fresher stuff. All right, so it's a little more red. This is a little more recent. It's still brown. It still looks dried. And again, I'm not really trying to cover anything I did before specifically. I'm just randomly stippling it around, forcing it into places. Okay. All right. And that one was a much lighter touch because, again, fresh blood dries in like five minutes. So most blood on a weapon is going to look old and brown if you're going for that sort of old effect. Now is where finally we go to our blood for the blood god. That's our last step. Because Blood for the Blood God is glossy. And it looks like it is fresh blood. Quite quite accurate flesh blood, I might add. Um, like if you've ever cut yourself. and uh, Sometimes when I'm, I, I've been working, I've cut myself. And, you know, I mean, as we all have. My usual response to that is to just, like, try to immediately paint something red. Just get that blood right in there and use it as a medium. That's what I say. Okay, so now I'm going to get a little Blood for the Blood God on my on my uh, brush, and then here on the edges, 
where I think there would be fresh blood. Very lightly, I'm going to stipple some of that on there. Focusing mainly on the edges, the highest spots where I think it would get caught. Okay. And now what I get is a nice, messy, blood-soaked club that has a lot of great variation in it. Okay? This is what I would call the sort of simplest blood effect. It's just you want some nice bloody weapons. Now, let's do something a little more fun. So here's a little rat ogre guy. I want to do the same thing here on his little fishing pole thingamajiggy. Okay? Um, so I've got my paints out here already. Just remix some of these. Okay. So very quickly, I'm just going to go ahead and get some on there. And then... Wipe my brush, go to the lighter color. Blood tends to show better over something bright like metal. Grab some of my deep shadow. I'm only going to do this one side just so we can... In normal, I would do the whole hook all the way around, but it's not going to show well on camera. So we work some of that brown in there. Let that dry. Then we grab some of our blood for the blood god. We can see how that dries out. We'll get it on the dab of the hook there on that. Just sort of randomly around. So what we get are splotches of fresh blood mixed in amongst the older drying bits okay now that was just doing that again quickly so you can see the the fast effect but what i really want to show you on this guy is some blood splatter so when you're thinking about blood and blood effects you want to think about the color of the miniature you're putting it on i see people sort of ignore this a lot because they just want to put blood on their weapons now, this is a thing that i think especially newer painters tend to overdo Less is more with blood. Um, on this club here, you can see how it really only shows on the metal. Like, it tends to mix into the wood. And that's okay. The brighter something is, the more the blood is going to stand out as a contrast. That's why when you see, like, the butcher's apron miniatures that have the blood spatter, those look really good. But if the miniature was black or dark green, it wouldn't show. So you need to think about the color palette of your the miniature itself. One of the big problems with corn miniatures is that they tend to be very red. And so as a result, not have a great amount of uh, of, of sort of ease of showing the actual blood splay sprayed on them. Um, I saw somebody who did an entire corn army in like a uh, uh, like a white cream and then you and then sprayed blood all over them, which I thought actually stood out rather nice. So what I'm gonna do here, is we're going to do some blood spray. Now, there are two ways to do blood spray. The first way to do blood spray is basically just like I just did, only you very, very, very lightly stipple. So, for example, if I wanted some blood here on top of his hand, um, I could get some of my red color here, and I could really wipe almost all of it off, and then very lightly... I could come in and stipple at it. If you want to get really insane, you could like actually place each little dot. Okay, that barely shows, but you can see it's got a little bit of a spray there. And what you do is you just kind of, and then you would come in with an individual brush and just kind of build it up. But what you're trying to make here is like a Dexter pattern, right? There you go. Now, that's one way to do it. 
Um, that ends up producing something a little more in scale. However, there's a more fun way to do it, but it is very dangerous and messy. Okay. And that is to do the actual spray method. And for that, you want to brush with some nice hard bristles. You can also use a toothbrush, something like that. So you're going to want to get something to like lay down like this because we're about to make a mess. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get a nice chunk of this on the end of my brush. Okay. Then I'm going to go straight into my red ink so I get a nice little mix of this in here. Okay. Then at an angle that I want to it to be at, I'm going to, this is hard to do holding the miniature and filming and everything, but I'm going to take it and I'm just going to flick it like that. And what I get is that every little flick brings more blood spatter, okay? This is a great way to get a natural pattern on something like a smock, right? But the problem with this is it is very random. So you have to be careful with this because you can't really control this. It's just gonna go where it goes. Um, if you want it to be a spray of dried blood instead of using like fresh blood for the blood god, you would replace it with the dark red. And by the way, to show how messy this is, uh, behind, but you can't see, like, look at this right here. <laughs> it really goes everywhere, okay? But it does produce a really cool effect. And if you just kind of keep flicking it, you get different size dots and spray, and you can get a cool effect. Like I said, uh, use this one with care. By the way, that does look very bloody. Um, very fresh blood. Okay. Excuse me while I wipe off my monitor because it went that far. <laughs> As I said, put up a screen. It's a little impossible for me to do while I'm filming it, but if I was normally doing this, I'd actually put him inside a piece of paper towel unfolded. That way it only goes in the paper towel. So just... Word of warning. That's that's the take-home point here, kids. Uh, don't make a mess of your, your hobby room or accidentally spray another miniature or something that you have done sitting behind it. Okay. So, now we've got some bloody weapons. We've got some bloody weapons with blood spray. All right, where it looks like he just really stabbed somebody and they exploded Dexter style on him. So that's cool. Now we're going to do the final fun one as I wipe off all the red, the blood I just sprayed all over all my paints. <laughs> it's fine. No big deal. Okay, so now let's do some blood strands. This is a fun one. Um, for this one, we're going to use... Let's get these guys out of the way. I needed something that had a big enough mouth. And I, wasn't, I didn't have anything else painted. So I found this old miniature from like... It was just sitting on my shelf. Like this thing is so ancient. Um, and we're going to use him because, because why not? He has a big mouth. So blood strands are great when they're going to be stringed from claws down. Um, these are great for things like ghouls, uh, or monsters that have just eaten someone. So in general, what you'd want to do is we start in the same place. That is to say, we'd want to like get some blood around his mouth here. Okay. Like the basic steps are still the same. If he just ate somebody, he be, if you're going to do blood strands, it has to look like he just ate somebody. Okay. So the first step would be just stippling this stuff on there, just like we did before. Okay, so we want some nice
Just so it looks like he's got a nice bloody mouth. Probably need to work some darker spots into there. Okay. We'd put on a little blood for the blood god, because again, this is fresh blood. And so we do want a little glossy blood. In fact, we're going to use this glossy blood as our anchor points. Okay. And you'll see what I mean by that in just a moment. So now we're going to go to our Uhu glue. So this stuff's fun to work with. Um, this is going to take some practice. You like it just it's not an easy technique. It is and it isn't. I don't know. It's hard to explain. You need a toothpick or something similar. This is a little like, you know, punji stick. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Uhu glue. It's very strandy. I'm just going to shoot out a little bit of it there into my palette. It, ha it produces little strings very easily. That's why we use this stuff. I've seen some people also do this with hot glue. I've never figured out exactly how to do that, but I know you can. Um, I'm going to take a single drop of the actual just straight red ink, but again, any red paint would work. Okay. And then I'm going to take a little bit of the, the blood for the blood god. Okay. And I'm just going to dip the back of my toothpick or punji stick into it so I get something like that. And then I'm going to mix it all up. So what I get is this gross, like, mess like this. Okay? And there's two ways to do this. I'm going to show you both. So the first is you can kind of pre-mix this, but you got to be quick. And then what I'm going to do is grab some of these gut, like, strands. You can see what happens here when I pull it out. gonna like hook it onto something come on hook there we go and then I'm gonna just pull a strand up to like a tooth and get it all the way up there okay And so what I get is a strand like that. And I can pull off this little excess piece down here. Now, this stuff is very fragile. So, like, using this kind of stuff on gaming models, mm, it's questionable. Um, if you're never going to, like, touch the mouth, okay. Um, this is also a great way to make, like, guts, like, entrails. You can mix this stuff up. So if I wanted to, like, have him having had eaten little bits of guts or I wanted viscera hanging out of his mouth, this is a great way to do that. Like, I can find a nice-looking piece here that kind of looks like viscera. I can just stretch it out until it snaps. Okay, and so what I get, and this stuff you can play around with for a little while. It's not going to harden immediately. Get that off. There we go. Okay, so I can like take that, kind of shape it into place. All right, so that's option one. All right, so he's got a little thingy hanging out. He's got a nice little strand running across here. 
The other way you can utilize the Yoohoo glue, which is a little easier in my, well, it can be a little easier or harder, depends, is instead of mixing in the paint, which tends to like actually make it dry very quickly, instead you just take some of the Yoohoo glue, you get it out on your palette. And then what we do is we just dip our toothpick in it. And we just start making strands. I just go back and forth, touching side to side. because this stuff wants to make strands. Okay. When I touch one side, it just naturally wants to do this. It's actually one of the more annoying parts about working with it. It's benefit is also its drawback. You can see I've got strands running here over to my actual palette still. I can grab those and pull those down. Okay. And then what we do So now we've got kind of like all this little web work of viscera in there. By the way, if you ever wanted to do saliva, you can just stop right there instead of doing the red at all. You can this is the uhu trick is a great trick for saliva. I'd probably I'll probably talk about that in a separate video, but um, it's a good way to do that. Okay. I'll probably do an all things slime and saliva and spit video. All right. Now we have to let this dry and it has to set for the other method here. So I'm going to take just a brief pause. I'll be back in just a second for you. It'll be no time at all. And we'll talk about how we finish this up. And that'll finish, and then we'll finish up our blood tutorial. Back in a moment. All right, we're back. So our glue has set here. Uh, our uhu glue has set, and it's set when it becomes, you know, sort of not sticky. It's always going to have a little bit of stretch to it, but you can see in there. Now, sometimes you'll get a little too much horizontalness, like you'll get too many of these connections going this direction as opposed to in between the teeth. If that happens, you can. Like you'll see that the, like if I pull on it, it's going to pull the whole thing. So you can either with a really sharp exacto come in and cut them. Like you need something, a brand new blade, like really sharp. Or you can come in with like a very, very precise pair of scissors and cut them. Um, so for example, I keep a little, little Leatherman next to my desk here uh, for just this sort of purpose with a sharp pair of cutters on it. So if I wanted to get rid of this little brace right here, I can come in and just very carefully snip. And there we go. Okay. Again, not the easiest thing in the world. You have to be very careful, but you'll see how when it sets, it's, you know, still stretchy, but it'll hold a little bit. Okay, so now what we do is now that it's all set, we get out our, our blood for the blood god, blood for the blood god, or whatever we happen to want to use here. Let me set him back down in his little position there. Let's put him somewhere where you'll be able to see him when I paint him. There we go because you want this real stable. Okay. And I'm actually going to get some and put it out on the pallet because I don't want it. I don't want to have to rely on the pot staying open and crap like that. Okay. Okay. Now, get some on my brush. Maybe you can add in some other color if you want to have some like 
you want to brighten it up some, you could add a little dab of red ink or something like that if you want it to look real fresh. But it's gonna look pretty, it's gonna look pretty light because it's gonna be stretched over a clear thing. So you probably don't need to do too much with it. And then very carefully, you're gonna come in and you're gonna just paint each little strand. Now in this case, you actually need quite a bit of paint on the brush because this stuff doesn't flow super well. So you kind of want it to just almost, not really glob off the brush, but a little bit isn't gonna hurt you if it globs a little. The blood needs to look like it has mass to it. And you can, if there's little connection points you made, you can retouch those up. Make sure those are also colored. And we basically just give all those little strands a touch of paint. Now, normally I'd flip this guy over and do the other side, but I think you get the idea. And there you go. What you get is a nice little bloody mix. You can let it dry. Make sure you've got everything. If you see colors that are sticking out, kind of hold it up to the light. You can just come in, get a little more on your brush, and just dab it around. A little thicker application of paint will also help to keep this nice and solid. I mean, if you run your, if you pick the miniature up and just put your finger into the mouth, it's done. You're gonna you're gonna clear the whole mouth out. Okay, so if you're doing this on a gaming miniature, try, 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 please, to make sure it's in a place that you're never gonna accidentally touch. But there you go. That's actually the second method is actually my preferred method because taking the glue straight out when you mix the uhu glue with other things, I found it tends to react somewhat poorly. Um, makes it a little harder to control. Whereas if you just kind of wick it right off the top with your toothpick and stretch it around, you get some really nice strands like that. And I think that looks pretty great as far as just like a bloody mess inside this guy's mouth. I think that came out real nice. And again, you saw it didn't take a huge amount of time. You know, the biggest time is actually just the drying time in between there. But so there we go. And just like that, we've got our blood strands done. So... Uh, what are our key lessons we want to take away with our blood effects? Well, number one, less is more. Um, unless you're going for a, like, you know, scar blood wrath, a guy who's like reborn in blood. In general, if you use less blood effects, they'll stand out more. Number two, think about the miniature you're putting the blood against. Uh, so for example, the blood on this guy's club, it's there, it's an effect, but it's very subtle. Whereas compared to this guy who's you know, basically a gray white, it really stands out in stark contrast. So the color of your, of the skin or the material, the cloth, whatever, that you're putting the blood against matters. Number three, blood dries really, really, really fast. So if you're at all trying to communicate old blood, you need to go into the purple, dark brown spectrum, and you kind of just mix it with your other red colors to get something that looks up like that. Only the freshest of blood would be glossy. Um, if you're going to use the spritz technique off a toothbrush or a, sh a hard bristled paint paintbrush, uh, do make sure that you have the area nicely covered so you don't spray blood everywhere. If there are areas the miniature you don't want to get this blood spray on, make sure you putty them off, cover them up, tape them off, whatever. Just make sure you cover it up. For example, if you don't want it on your base or something, or if there's a part of the miniature that wouldn't be blood covered for whatever reason, uh, make sure that those areas are covered over before you start spraying. Because once you flick the end of that brush, it's going to go directionally, but it's going to go like in that direction, it will freaking go everywhere. Finally, when doing blood strands, ooh -hoo, glue is your best friend. Uh, it's a way to achieve these great strandy like effects. You can mix the paint in directly if you want a more heavy, almost like intestinal effect, or you can just apply it straight. 
by touching your toothpick to the end of the glue. And then once you have it just going back and forth in between, once the glue is set and dry, you just come in with your blood colored paint. This is obviously fresh blood. So here's the one time where I'm like, yep, fresh blood all the way. And, uh, and give that a nice good coat. More paint on the brush is your friend. Once the paint hardens, it actually helps to reinforce this a little bit. And when you're using this stuff, make sure not to put it in an area where you'll accidentally grab or pick up the miniature. You know, in this guy, he's got plenty of space. It is in his mouth. But that being said, his mouth is real near the ground. Like you can see how close his mouth sits to the ground normally. So like if he got too close to a piece of terrain or sat down on another miniature or something, you know, if I put him down on top of another miniature right there, I'm going to clear all that out. So just be careful. I don't want to see any of your good work go to waste. But there you go. That's blood and blood effects. I do hope you enjoyed. I hope you found that useful. If you did, give it a like. Uh, subscribe for more hobby cheating in the future. Share this with anybody who might be looking for tips. Maybe some fellow adherents who uh, want to sacrifice some blood for the blood god. Sharing is always the nicest thing you can do and deeply appreciated. But uh, as always, I thank you very much for watching. And we'll see you next time.